what a glorious day it has been. I have walked the dogs. I have sat in my dining room and watched the birds fly in. There's like all these birds everywhere because they're eating all the little bugs. This is my favorite time of year because it's fall. So all the birds start to eat all the bugs. It's super fun. And um, I uh, got to talk to my amazing friend, Lisa Sharp, who is the bomb. And she's another coach that I know. And she's awesome. So I got to talk to her today. I got to organize my bookshelves that I have been purging. Anyway, it's been a great day. Super excited. So welcome to your um, today's uh, discussion about how can you love thy neighbor and slay the patriarchy all day long. So I wanted to, oh, I forgot that my book is behind me. So I wanted to um, talk to you a little bit about this thought. So I don't know if you're familiar with the idea of loving your neighbor, but uh, when I was growing up in Utah, love thy neighbor was one of the fundamental things that um, we talked about when I was growing up. And so love thy neighbor is sort of like this idea of um, it goes along with the golden rule of do unto others as you would have done to you, but also it's about loving your neighbor as yourself. And so how can you connect with your neighbors in a way that's intentional and also loving? And then um, I was at this really remarkable conference uh, called Evolving Faith at the beginning of October. And I was sitting in on this conversation about decolonization, racism, and social justice um, from the context of the Bible and biblical teachings. And one of the things that we were talking about is this idea of um, how can you love thy neighbor and engage in social justice in the way in a way that is intentional and inspired by um, from coming from a spiritual perspective. And so, one of the things that someone said was, if you are going to love thy neighbor as thyself, and you are going to engage in actions that um, that benefit the whole. You can, one of the ways you can do that is by voting in every single election. And I sat there, I'm sitting in this church in Denver, and I'm going, what? What does voting have to do with loving thy neighbor? And then they went on to talk about people who are disenfranchised from voting. So people who are uh, can't vote because of the way the laws are in the state or because they can, don't have access to the voting booth because they can't get to the voting booth or because they are people of color or they don't have a legal documentation that gives them an ID that in some states it's almost impossible to be able to vote without an ID, especially in the southern states. And so thinking about this idea of loving thy neighbor and slaying the patriarchy by voting. And I really like sat in that for a little while and I was like, hmm. So one of the ideas that I would like to put forth to you is this idea of thinking about how can we grow the community of the whole instead of the community of the privileged or the community of um, the majority, right? So the, the, how can we disrupt community, the power structure um, through voting and through loving your neighbor? So if you have neighbors that you know are being oppressed or being discriminated against or who are experiencing some sort of ism, sexism, classism, racism, homophobia, transphobia, and you vote for people that will help protect those communities, then you are loving your neighbor by slaying the patriarchal power through your vote. And I think this is a really lovely way to think about voting because often, especially in this country, I want to be really clear. In most democracies around the world, people turn out in, in really high numbers to vote. Like in the, like 80% of eligible voters will turn out to vote. But in, hi Raya, how are you? Uh, but in communities where, like in the United States of America, our voter turnout is sometimes as low as 10% of the eligible voters turning out to vote. And so that means that 
in some communities, the people who are being elected into public office are being selected by the minority of people. And that's not a lot of people. So I really want to encourage people to start thinking about this from a spiritual perspective, voting as a spiritual act. So voting as an act of social justice, as the Bible teaches us, voting um, as an act of defiance um, in order to infiltrate the membranes of power in the political structure. I just think it's a really interesting idea. So that's the first thing. Um, that's my first easy tip is vote. Um, here in Oregon, we are so blessed because here in Oregon, we have um, the opportunity to vote from the home. So um, everybody who has a driver's license, it gets registered to vote um, with your driver's license and you, um, you get to vote from home. So we get permanent vote by mail uh, in the entire state. And so we actually have a really high rate of voting because, um, because you can do permanent vote by mail. So it's pretty awesome. So the um, next thing, the next tip, tip number two that I have for you when it comes to loving thy neighbor and slaying the patriarchy all day long um, is to remove yourself out of your own way. So if you think about your community and you think about how you connect to the people around your community, how do you stop yourself from engaging in being vulnerable with the people around you? I was just talking to a client on Monday who is really nervous about Thanksgiving because they have put it into their head that um, the family that, that they are marrying into is not going to be as accepting of her because of, who she, of her background and who she is. And so we had this long conversation about how can she get out of her own way? And I kind of coached her through this idea of if you are going to love that family um, and love, love that family as your family, how can you stop making assumptions about what they want to know about you and start talking about yourself in an authentic, intentional way so that they can see you for who you are and learn about your passions and learn about why you do the work that you do so that they understand you better? And I think this is a really important concept. We need to burn our egos down. We need to think about the mean girl in our head or the mean voice in our head that keeps us stuck and keeps us from moving forward and say, hey, girl or boy or, or they or whatever, I see you, I hear you, and you're irritating the crap out of me right now. And I can't. I can't connect with my community and connect with the people in my world in an intentional, beautiful, glorious way. I can't infiltrate the membranes of power and slay the patriarchy and take down these structures that are hurting other people in my community if I'm worried about getting in my own way or I'm worried about what people think or I'm worried about how people are going to react. And so the second thing you can do um, to slay the patriarchy and love your neighbor at the same time is get out of your own damn way. Stop telling yourself that you don't have something to offer to the world. Every single one of us is on the planet because we have something unique and beautiful to offer to the world. We are created in the image of love. We are here to spread the word of love. That's why we're here. And so every single one of you has a purpose and a message and a mission. And we're not going to do it all the same. I live in a house with four other people. None of us act the same about anything, but each one of us has a different purpose and a mission. And it's so clear to me what it is because with my kids, especially when they're not in their own way, they're like floating off into the ether in their own brains. My nine-year-old son has a mission and a vision about building he wants to become an architect so he can, can build houses for homeless people where everyone can come together in community and they all live in these giant spaces, communal spaces, where they cook together and clean together and love each other. And he has like drawn drawings and taped them onto our walls in our dining room of his structures that he's going to build to help the homeless. That is Sean's core purpose. He has that. He understands that. And he's not getting in his own way. He's got a clear path. Gwen, he wants to make art and make people happy. Like she has that vision of her core purpose, of the reason that she is here to spread love. She sees her vision and it's in creating and painting and making jewelry and doing these super creative things. 
Caitlin has a mission and a purpose to lead. She can see it. She does it all the time and she's so good at it. And the point I'm trying to make here is that they have this idea as children about how they can love their community, love their neighbors, connect with other people, and take down these isms that keep people in place and these structures that keep people in place. So if you think about, there's a card in the tarot deck called the tower, and it's usually on fire, and it's usually burning to the ground, <laughs> and it usually means that a bunch of chaos is going to come your way. But I think the really important thing to remember about the tower is that it also provides us an opportunity to burn down our ego, burn down the walls that are keeping us in place, and keep us from connecting with our neighbors and our community in a way that is intentional and loving and divine. And so what I really recommend to all of you is that you think about how you can burn your ego to the ground. How can you burn down these structures that you've put in place in front of you? So that you can love your neighbors, love your community, and connect with other people that you may not necessarily agree with, but you certainly want to have communion with. Because if we get into connection with people that we may not necessarily agree with, it makes it so that we can have a more robust conversation and we get out of our echo chambers and start connecting with people on a different level. Now, I want to say that Sometimes you're going to be able to recognize that the conversation you're in is too triggering for you to continue, and that's okay. Loving your neighbor and slaying the patriarchy does not mean that you get into conversations that are triggering or upsetting to you or other people. It means that you know your boundaries. It means that you're strong enough to say, I love you. I think you're a wonderful human being, but I can't talk to you about this anymore because it's too painful for me, and I need to pull out. And so. The, and then the, and this leads me to my third thing. So if you ground yourself and you speak from a space of groundedness and centering, then you can raise up the level of communication, high chancy, that you can raise up the level of communication that you have with other people and you can level up your community and what you are able to do to impact your community. So let me give you an example. I love to teach people how to ground themselves, and it doesn't take very much time. One of my blog posts on my blog talks about getting on your soapbox, and it talks about how you can, you go on a good ranty tear, you figure out the common theme, but then the third step to getting up on your soapbox and finding your soapbox message is to ground yourself, and it literally takes 10 seconds. You put your feet on the floor, you put your hands in your lap, you take a big deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth and you're coming from a place of centeredness instead of a place of chaos in your brain. And the minute you ground yourself, 10 seconds, that's all it takes. You can operate from a space of loving compassion because you're centered and you're not in a ranty space. And that's how we raise up and level up communities. That's how we love on our neighbors and our friends. That's how we create conversations around difficult topics like poverty and homelessness and LGBT issues and race and racism. When you come from a space of groundedness and centeredness, you are able to raise the elevation, the, I mean, raise the, the vibration of your community and your neighbors. And so the way that you slay the patriarchy is not by going out in this mad, passionate resistance, although there is a purpose for that, because it brings balance into the order. But the bottom line is the way to slay the patriarchy is not by resisting, because what we resist persists. The way that we're going to move through what we're going through right now as a nation is not to slay the patriarchy and fight and resist what's happening. The way to move through this is to ground, to center, to raise up and level up the voices of people from a space of love and compassion, not from a space of ranty anger. And so if you are willing to, number one, vote in every election for people that are interested and invested in raising people up instead of tearing people down, if you are willing to, number two, Burn down that ego to the ground. Burn it down. Tell that mean girl inside of you to shut her flipping mouth and go color an adult coloring book and leave you to your work. And the third thing 
is to ground yourself, center, raise up so you can level up your community. If you are willing to do those three things, then you will be able to engage in loving connection with your neighbors and your community in a way that will expand your thinking and expand your ability to engage in social justice change in a way that you've never experienced before. So I hope that you are going to be able to do those three things. And I really hope you'll let me know how it goes. So if you think about moving into the next year, into 2020, in a way that is intentional and takes down these structures that you've placed upon yourself, I think that you will find that you will be engaging in some really beautiful heart-centered action that's intentional and loving and graceful, and it's going to change the way you think about the graceful revolution. So I hope that you have a super amazing day. I'm getting ready to, um, right now I'm enrolling people in Rebel School that starts in January 23rd, and if you have any interest in engaging in learning how to um, create rebellious dialogue um, and join us for Rebel School. I'd love to have you. So uh, we start on January 23rd. And I, if you have any questions, um, send me a message or leave me a comment or send me an email. And um, I wanted to remind all of you that I have a free book on my website called Natural Born Rebel. And so if you're interested in reading a really short book with really amazing journal prompts, go check out Natural Born Rebel and download it and read it. And then um, let me know what you think. And I hope you have a super great rest of your week. And I'll talk to you next Wednesday. Bye.